Okay, we're with Steve Cram at uh, Scottish Athletics Awards Night, and it's a fantastic night with Laura Muir named the Athlete of the Year. And that shortlist, there were some actually some significant athletes not on the shortlist. People like uh, Rona Auckland, Callum Hawkins, Chris O'Hare, Mark Dry. Do you think that reflects on the on the strength of Scotland's elite athletes at the moment, Steve? Well, it does. You know, and you've, you had a great Commonwealth Games last year, and I'm, I'm sure that was a massive inspiration to a lot of athletes. We've got the Olympic Games coming up. We've got a World Championships in, in, in London in 2017, another Commonwealth Games looming it already in 2018, early 2018. So there's a lot of incentives for, for Scottish athletes to make their mark in Scotland, but also make their mark on the, in the British team. And you know, Ronald Auckland had a great cross country season, great winter season, and you know, you follow that on from you know the, the type of run that Beth Potter had at the Commonwealth Games last year. You know, so they all inspire each other. They start to see what each other are doing, and you know, yes, the big names Laura Muir and Lindsay Sharp on the world stage on the track, and Chris O'Hare doing so well, particularly last year. You know, it it's a, it's. Um, it's easy then to get a bit of momentum going and people start thinking, well, hang on a minute, you know, it, uh, if I, c I can train and live in Scotland and, and, and still reach the Olympic Games and, and win medals at major championships. Um, and I think that's really important. You know, it's a bit like us in the northeast of England. You know, we, we, at one point, we used to have, seem to have lots of people and then not so many. And, you know, we're trying to do the same thing to look, look come on, you know, you can sit within your club. Um, scenario and your coach, you don't have to shift, you don't have to move. If you get the support from the federations, both your national federation and, 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 and UK athletics as well, then you know, it's definitely possible. So you know, the, the upsurge in, in, in the performance at a world level um, of Scottish athletes has been great. You know, and you've, you've just mentioned Callum Hawkins, you know, he's an early jump up to the marathon, but you know, suddenly He's, he's maybe already thinking about Rio next year. Well, just sort of further down the pathway then, how do the clubs get, get in on the act for that? We've seen Kobarkin, you know, following Callum, and we see Central AC following Andrew Butcher. They, they're, all, they're GB internationals. Is that the way that it happens? You get someone within your club and you say, I want to see how I can do? I think so. And I, I think it's important, though, that clubs, t um, you know, move with the times as well. You know, I've been a big supporter of that. Say, so look... You should be very, very proud if one of your athletes um, becomes an international and representing your country. But you also shouldn't then want to feel kind of somehow as though they've been taken away from you. You've got to then use them. And most athletes will be more than happy to get back involved in their club to inspire others to come along. And, you know, nights like this are a really good opportunity for the, the elites to rub together with, with the people who are... You know, for years and years and years, have been doing the kind of donkey work, if you like. And but that's really important because we've got to get we've got to get more young coaches involved. We've got to get uh, more young officials involved. And you know, we rely on the volunteers incredibly within the club system. But also, they have to, I think, embrace the new world in which we're operating in in athletics. And um, that's something which is, is is happening slowly. But I, you know, I think there's a, there's more we can probably do. One of the programmes that we're having a lot of success with is our National Academy. It's just gone up to 42 athletes, but the, the support is actually for the athlete, the coach and the support team, brackets, parents or whatever. Is that education process vital to get them from junior to senior, you know, for our 17, 18, 19-year-olds? Well, I think, you know, it, support for, for junior and even sub-junior athletes is, is, is incredibly important because the only place they're going to get it is from within their own sport. So things like the academy are, are brilliant because that's where you take the risk. You know, that's where a federation should be prepared to take a little bit of risk because one or two of them are going to be the ones who will bring more funding in further down the line because they've gone on to win medals at, at, at major championships. And, you know, we've got to be a little bit more open-minded as to how we can help people because a little bit of help, and honestly, a little bit of help at that age, it might be just enough to keep somebody involved, to help the parents, uh, to help the coach, to help with travel expenses, whatever it might be, or, f or physiotherapy, could be anything. And it might be just that one little thing that makes a difference that keeps them involved at a time when often athletes find it difficult, the transition between junior athletics and senior athletics and, and often we lose them so it's, a, it's very important and you know hopefully um, you know, you'll see the fruits of that further down the line but it, it's it can be it's very easy again as I said for people to say oh why keep giving money to the sort of better ones um, well it's because they're the ones who you know, as, as athletes improve and, and get better they're the ones who will inspire others to come along behind them just finally then I know you're a big fan of cross country and you, you recognize the importance of it we're having a lot of success in terms of the events. Uh, National Relays last week, the largest for 23 years, and then next week we've got a short course championship. 100 more women entered than last year. 
and actually I think five times as many as there was in 2010. So are you pleased to see that and do you, do you fundamentally believe that that's important for, for athletes at this time of year? Yeah, I think there's a few things going on. I, th I think um, your clubs have been much better at, 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 at embracing the kind of non structured running groups that are out there and things like park runs etc and have been more open to and to bringing those people in of course if you started through athletics through one of those other doors you then there were used for too long people saw club athletics as a bit too elite so but now actually we're seeing all over the country certainly in the northeast is the same so i think particularly in the women's sections mm -hmm. the numbers are going up and up and up and up because it's more accessible and the cross country is great fun it's something a bit different you know and you don't get the chance really to do that in other events only through club athletics you can do cross country and then what that does is for me anyway it, it underpins cross country as a as a discipline because i think it is important for our um, development of everything from 800 up to up to the marathon so the two things are working together they might not have realized they're helping each other but i think more numbers means a bigger type event it means that some of the better athletes think oh you know what am i going to take parks it feels like a bigger event so the two things are, are, are working together so we've got to get past that of people having a fear to compete mm -hmm. shouldn't we if they're a club athlete yeah i think so you know um we, we have some slightly bizarre things going on as well i mean just to, I, I would use an example you know laura who i coach elite athlete you know olympian whatever um, we had the National Cross Country Relays this weekend and she kind of, you know, st starting a winter, middle of said, no, I might like to run that. Eight, nine days before, wasn't allowed to enter, hadn't been entered by a team and you, you can go, hang on a minute, in this day and age, you know, we just got to be a bit more accessible, I think, sometimes. It's all right saying cross country is important. If it is, then let's make it easy to enter. Let's make it accessible for everybody, whether they're elite athletes, Olympians, or whether they're somebody who's just starting. 